Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Lightroom Classic and I'm going to be talking about a couple of tools that I think are the most powerful tools in Lightroom. I use them all the time. They're fantastic. They were a little bit scary at first when I first kind of got into masking and things like that. And yes, they're masking tools. These are the range masks, uh, namely the luminance range mask and the color range mask. They're super powerful. They're incredible and they're so useful. I'm going to use them on this landscape today. This was shot in Iceland and what I want to do is adjust the light and adjust the color and I'll do some other things as well. But that's really what luminance and color range masks are all about, adjusting light and color primarily. So this is an example of how you can do that on a landscape. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I always start here in basic just because it's uh, honestly just like the best place to start. I've got a raw file here that needs a little bit of work. And so what I'm going to do is pull down the highlights and pull up the shadows. I'm trying to create a little bit more of an even exposure uh, because I, I just kind of like to start that way. Um, and then I come back and add contrast. So I generally do highlights and shadows first and then come and do contrast before, after, before, and after. The light's a little bit more balanced now, which I think is looking good. And usually after I've done that, I'm ready to jump into masking. That's what we're going to do. So I'm going to click on masking and I'm going to go into the range mask and I'm going to start with a luminance range mask. Now, what this is, is a mask based on light values. And so, obviously, these photographs are made up of just collections of light. There's highlights, midtones, and shadows. And then there's a lot of zones kind of in between each of those kind of three major zones. And that's what a luminosity mask or a luminance range mask allows you to do. You've got this uh, bar graph, if you want to call it that. And it's basically, it just represents the range of light. You can see what happens as soon as you grab like this triangle at the bottom. What's happening is you'll see that this pink overlay, and I made it pink, you can change the color. I do that because it's not a color that really occurs a lot in nature. But um, I did that so it's visible. But what's happening is my mask is being created. And what I'm doing as I move this is I'm defining the range of light. So if you go back and look at this whole thing, let me get that whole thing. If you look here, it's really dark on the left side, really bright on the right side. That's the range of light. So shadows in the far left, highlights on the far right, midtones in the middle, and then all the shades of gray in between. And all you're doing by dragging this from this side is you're telling Lightroom, hey, take this mask away from the shadows. Note that I'm going towards the highlights. So I'm getting away from the shadows. And that's all I'm doing. I'm telling it, hey, build a mask that's going to incorporate just the highlights. Well, that's what I've done there. But um, I want to get the sky, but I want to get a little bit of the midtones, and so that's kind of what I'm doing. By moving this around, I'm just telling it where the mask needs to go. Now, there's another thing you can do, and that is if you drag all this all the way back, you can start on the other side and get away from the highlights. And as you can see, highlights are generally in the sky, especially in this kind of situation. And all I'm doing is getting away from that, and I'm going to have the mask apply mostly to the shadows because I'm on the left-hand side. So you have the flexibility to go in and do those kind of things. Uh, you can also move this around and uh, you can create a, a broader or a, uh, a more narrow a range of light, I should say, for the mask. And then you can collapse it, move it around, all that sort of stuff. But one of the really powerful features or components of this is that you have these little triangles down here. So you'll note as I move these, I can separate that triangle from the, the bar there. And what that's doing is that's the gradient edge or the fade. That's where you're basically dissipating the mass so that you have a smooth edge. So let me show you something here. Notice when I'm like this and I'm all the way bunched up uh, all the way over here to the right, you'll see that the, the area covered by the mask is abrupt between where the mask is and where the mask uh, drops off. And what this little triangle does is by dragging it and separating it, it starts to blend that together so you get a better fade. And all that means is when you make adjustments in the mask, that faded edge or that gradient edge is going to help you blend those adjustments into your photo more evenly and more smoothly. And really what that means to your viewer is they're not going to notice an abrupt change from, oh, this light was adjusted, that was not, or this color was adjusted and that one was not. It blends and fades together more accurately. And that's how luminosity masks work. And what I want to do in this case, I went to about a 72 in terms of being focused on the highlights because I'm working on the sky here. So that's going to be highlights. And then um, my fade was about a 38. I love that those number, numbers are here because I can look at my notes and, and reproduce that pretty quickly. What I've got now is a luminosity mask built for mostly the highlights, which is this area inside this square. 
And because I drug that triangle to the left, I faded that into a little bit of the midtones as well. And all I want to do is slightly darken that sky because it's a little bit too bright. So I'm going to do like a negative point, you know, two, two, five, two, seven, something like that. And then I want to take the tint and the temperature up. So I'm going to bump those up both because I want to warm up this sunset because it was a beautiful sunset and some gorgeous light and some gorgeous color. And I want to bring some of that back. So I'm going to bring that up here in the sky using that luminosity mask. And that's really the beauty of this tool is you get to isolate that area really quickly and easily. But if you look at the before and the after, you can see I had a nice impact there. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go grab another mask real quick. And that's a linear gradient. And I want to do that here in the foreground. And what I want to do is slightly brighten that because it's quite a bit darker than the rest of the photo. So maybe like a 0.11, not a whole lot. But I also add, uh, add a little bit of warmth and tint here because I want to make sure that kind of matches the sky because, of course, it's reflecting the sky because that's about a half inch of water there uh, here. And this was Vesterhorn in Iceland. So if you look at the before and the after, slightly brighter, slightly warmer, and slightly more tint just to match what's going on in the sky. So now that I've done that with the luminosity mask and the linear gradient, I'm going to go in and get the other range mask, which is a color range mask. And you guessed it, right? As the name implies, it's all about just picking a color and making a mask based on that color. So it's incredibly powerful and just absolutely fantastic. And so what I want to do here is come in and I'm going to grab some of this uh, area here in the mountain. So kind of some of that orange. And you'll see what happens is it's grabbed that color all over the photo. Well, that's where this refine slider comes in. And so you can drag refine to the right and it'll basically just increase the mask across areas that are kind of adjacent or near that color, like on the color spectrum. But you can also subtract from that or kind of refine it um, negatively, if you will, or shrink it, I guess is probably a better way to say that. And that allows you to get a little bit more targeted. So I end up going here with like about a 22. So I cut that mask down pretty much. But as you can see, it's really focused heavily on the mountains, which I think looks good. Now, it's not getting every bit of that, but that actually works for me just fine here because what I'm doing is I'm actually going to increase the exposure a little bit. I want to brighten some of that area, but I don't want to do too much. And I want to keep some of that shadow. So I like how some of this left side is still in shadow. And what I want to do is add a little bit of tint and temperature here. So again, kind of mimicking what I did in the sky and in the reflection in terms of the color shift. And that's just uh, something I'm, I'm trying to be consistent about in this video. And then while I'm at it, because it is a, uh, a mountain, I like to add clarity to things like that. And that picks up some of the reflection too. And I'm okay with having some clarity in that reflection. So if you look at this color range mask, pretty targeted on that area. And if I show you the before and after for that mask, obviously a bit darker, not quite as crisp. And now a little bit brighter, the light's hitting it because I brightened it, uh, and a bit more crisp, and that's because of the clarity. So that's using a color range mask to come in and really help kind of shape and define the light and also make some color adjustments. So even though it's a color range mask, I'm making light adjustments to that color. So I'm brightening that color with the color range mask because it lets you pick something uh, so accurately. And speaking of which, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come over here and get this blue in the sky. And boom, I made a nice little mask there in the sky. And what I often will find myself doing in an edit is, especially in a landscape, because the sky is generally going to be brighter, I'm going to um, often come with a linear gradient and drop that into the sky to create a little bit of shadow and contrast. But I can also use a color range mask for that because I grabbed that blue. It's pretty much just grabbing the sky. And I can come over here to the exposure. And what I want to do is just drop that a little bit just to create some of that contrast that I'm talking about. So like maybe a 0.3. But if you look at the before and the after, a little bit uh, richer look there because of its higher contrast because a color range mask allowed me to change the overall lighting in that color just in the sky. So you can see how stacking these tools and using them on a landscape or any kind of photo, frankly, really gives you a lot of power and control over what your overall result is going to look like. And now I want to do a couple of things to kind of start wrapping this up. I'm going to go into color grading and I'm going to start in highlights and my hue was about a six. So I'm going to move that just a little bit kind of into the red and saturation is about a 14. And all I'm doing is adding some warmth to the highlights, kind of bringing up that sunset look. And I'm going to do something similar in midtones. I'm going to do a hue of about a 30 here and uh, I'm going to get a saturation level of about a 10. Again, um, just adding some warmth and some uh, some saturation to the warmer tones 
in the highlights and midtones. That's generally on a sunset what I'll do. I'll play with the highlights and the midtones. And then in the shadows, I tend to do the opposite, which is to come in and do something that's quite a bit cooler. So for me, that's usually around 230, 235. So something about like that, let's say 233 in this case. And then my saturation level is about a 12 or 14. 15 looks good. All that's doing is just adding a little bit of color uh, and coolness into the shadows. If you think about it, especially applicable for fun, uh, sunset, in my opinion, the warmer stuff is brighter, or I should say the brighter stuff is warmer, and the darker stuff is cooler. So that's really what I'm doing. I'm just kind of leaning in to that color contrast of the warm and the cool and how they kind of play against or play off of each other uh, in a sunset like this one. And now I'm going to hop into my favorite tool. And if you saw my last video about Lightroom, I covered this tool uh, as well. But it's just, it's, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. And what I'm going to do here is come in and I'm going to do about a 66 on the saturation of the blues, which seems pretty high, but it doesn't always make it just a crazy over the top look. It's uh, in this case, I think it does a pretty good job of looking uh, balanced overall. I do about a 40 something here. So let's call it a 47 and the hue is about the opposite uh, on the negative side. So like a negative 47, I'm getting some nice rich colors, which is why I love calibration so much. And then I'm going to come in here and my hue is about a positive 12. And uh, my, my saturation here is like a negative 12. And that's just taming uh, some of that warmth that I added with these other two sliders. But overall calibration does a great job of really giving you that nice pop of color at the end, which is when I tend to use it. So before and after, nice, nice looking sunset, I think. And then one of the things I like to do when I'm wrapping up an edit is just think about my subject and what I want to do to kind of amplify the visibility for that subject and if there's anything that I need to do. And that usually involves me going back to masking. And in this case, I'm going to get a radial gradient. And what I want to do is just drop that here into the mountain and the reflection of the mountain. So maybe something about like that and maybe scoot it over a little bit. And what I want to do is just slightly brighten it, uh, you know, like 0.15, something about like that. I'm going to give it a tiny bit of warmth. So I'm just kind of playing up that, uh, that light and that color on the mountain there. And then I like to come back with clarity if necessary on my subject just to give it a little bit more focus and punch. And radial masks are great at that. Uh, they're super useful. I use them all the time. They're great for hitting little areas like that quickly. Uh, but if you look at the mountain and the reflection of it, because I covered both with that radial gradient, there it is before, and there it is now. A little bit brighter, a little bit punchier, slight bit warmer. And that's how you can use these tools, like a luminance range mask and a, uh, a color range mask to really isolate colors, isolate sections, adjust the light, and adjust the color and really have a huge impact on your photo. That's what it looked like. That's what it looks like now. So really massive impact on the overall look of the photo. And a lot of that's down to masking and specifically being able to isolate color ranges and light ranges with luminance range and color range mask. If you're not using those tools, I highly recommend that you uh, practice with them, play around with them, just experiment. You're not gonna break anything but they're incredibly powerful tools that give you so much control over really fine tuning your edits and getting the look that you want. And that's really what it's all about. Masking is about control. That's why it's such a powerful, uh, these two features are really super powerful and why I like them so much in Lightroom Classic. Hope this gives you some ideas for your own landscapes, my friend. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you guys have any requests, leave them down below. I'll see you soon and until next time. Adios.